So it looks like we are now live on Facebook. Welcome everybody who is showing up. We're just going to give them a couple minutes to get started here. For those who are just joining us tonight, you're going to be with me, Casey Bros, and I get to show you how to draw a dinosaur. Actually, how I draw a dinosaur, but if you want to follow along, you are more than welcome to, and you can do so with pencil and pen, and paper, you can do an iPad, I mean, whatever you would like. We're just going to go through the steps of what I do to make our dinosaurs for Dinovember. So we're going to kind of give a little bit here, three minutes or so, until the actual projected time when everybody should be popping on here. But from there, I just, you know, hope everybody's doing okay. It is definitely uh, crazy out there lately. But, um, you know, as long as we're taking the proper steps, we'll be safe and be able to get through this and we can all have dinosaurs together. So I'll go ahead and repeat everything I said at seven. Once again, just kind of working through some technical things right now, making sure that our menagerie of networking is working here. Looks so that we got our admin in here, which is fabulous. And got another three more minutes. For those who are just joining us, we're popping in here. Feel free to stick around. I'm gonna be drawing a dinosaur. So we have a couple of views. We've gone by now. Hopefully, you guys have the ambiance playing in your background as well, so it gets me all pumped up. Sweet. Thank you, Shelby. I'm glad it looks good on your end. Thank you for popping in. That's my sis. Make sure I'm okay. This is great. So if you guys have any comments, go ahead and send them via chat. Feel free to pop in, ask questions. Ben is hanging out, is the admin for this evening, and he'll be answering any and all questions. I'm very lucky to have several screens showing. I've got my iPad sitting here. I get to watch Facebook Live. I get to have the ambiance going. I get to see some references. It's pretty awesome. Speak louder. Okay, well, that's Dad. I know you got to uh, lean a little bit closer, Dad. I'm sure you'll be able to hear that way. <laughs> so I think I might have to... Uh, my favorite dinosaur... Oh, shoot. That's from Rose Brothers Productions. My favorite dinosaur is the Stegosaurus. All-time favorite with the Thagomizer on the end of its tail. I don't know why. It's always been kind of my awkward favorite dinosaur. And I've enjoyed just drawing it and seeing who's, you know, I can whack around. Hi, Galen. Welcome aboard. Hopefully you brought your pen and paper. Maybe some iPad action. Maybe some watercolor action, which would be pretty freaking cool. 6.59. We're going to wait until 7. Kind of get things rolling here. Got five people watching. This is exciting. Oh, Raptor, it's okay. She didn't get out. We kept her in. Just like Ben, we were safe. They're rattling the fences. So if you guys have any comments or questions, please send them via chat. Let's get excited here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have people kind of trickling in here. But tonight, you're going to join myself, Casey as I show you how I go about drawing a dinosaur. So this is really cool. Ben and I have had to do some pretty crazy stuff to get this going. I'm going to zoom on my iPad, which is going to his computer, which is connected through Facebook Live, yada, yada, yada. So hopefully everything works out tonight. Awesome. So to get started, we are going to give you guys a chance to pull what dinosaur I should draw tonight. So let me zoom here up really quick. So here are our choices. All right, number one, 
really, really cool dinosaur. This is the Therizinosaurus. A lot of you guys know it from those pretty sweet claws right here. Pretty amazing animal. They thought those were originally used for hacking at other dinosaurs until they found its head. It was more of an herbivore. So they believe that that was used maybe for slicing. You are him. I'm typing. He's not. Okay, so we're hearing your typing. Yeah. No, you're not. You're hearing him clicking. So this is a pretty unique okay. dinosaur. It's so very one. I'm going to get this whole started. I don't know where it's at. Um, let's see. Your case is a bit, bit quiet, and the typing on whoever's end, it doesn't really help. All right. It sounds like Ben needs to mute himself because he's the one who's typing away. So, Ben, you may want to mute yourself. Anyway, we're, like I said, we're trying to work okay. on here. We're going through my iPad, so the microphone probably isn't the best. Anyway, I'll speak as close as I can. So once again, we're going to get a poll ready, and you guys will be able to choose which dinosaur that you guys would like me to draw tonight. So once again, number one, we've got our amazing Therizinosaurus, this pretty sweet monster, with those awesome ripping claws. Believe it or not, those were, I think, upwards of three feet in length. Pretty crazy amount. So a person was, you know, we're talking, you know, a little person compared, might be a little bigger than that. Anyway, so th number one, there's Isaurus. Number two is a very unique Ceratopsian, one that Ben has actually never heard of. And this is Pac or Alberta Ceratops. I almost messed that one up. This is a very unique animal to Canada, hence the name Alberta Ceratops. And like Triceratops, it had that really, really cool brow horn right above the eye, but it was missing that long horn like Triceratops does. It had more of a nosy boss, it's like a little ram. Oop, Eractus. Eractus. You're right, Olivia, it does look like Freddy Krueger. And then number three, is all-time Jurassic favorite. This guy is Ceratosaurus. So this is a big theropod dinosaur who actually did appear in Jurassic Park, believe it or not, in the third movie. When they were digging around in the poo piles, this guy showed up, gave him a good sniff, and took off. So we'll see how this poll goes. Uh, one, two, or three. We're going to give you guys a couple minutes to choose which ones that you would like to for me to draw tonight. So, let's see if Ben can get that up there. We're going to wait on him. Otherwise, we'll just go through the comments and see the tally. You know, we'll do it the old-fashioned way, one, twos, and threes. So far, I've got a three from Caitlin, which is pretty awesome. Oh, there we go. Sweet! There's our poll. So, guys, go ahead and click on what dinosaur. There's Dinosaurus, number one. Alberta Ceratops, two. Ceratosaurus, number three. And you guys click away. We've got eight people so far, so far, so we can get votes in there. And then we're gonna go about two minutes. Give you guys a chance to give you a click a ruse. And uh, we're also gonna feed Velociraptors here. Apparently, don't worry. No cows were harmed in the collection of feeding these dinosaurs. But uh, I can't. Uh, but this is the bad part. But you know, all part of keeping raptors. Beasts, crazy beasts. It's all right. We'll settle down here shortly. Okay. Then, how about when you're done? The all right. So, we are done. I guess the poll is. Oh no! Keep going. Pull is up. So you guys keep voting, and then Ben is going to go ahead and give me the final dinosaur, and which one I'm, I'm going to draw here. So I see my little little hearts. Keep popping those in, guys. Love to see those hearts. Folks who don't have access to poll, vote for two and three. All right. We got one more minute. Let's get those votes in. We got 11 viewers. Welcome, everybody who just showed up. We're doing a poll right now on which dinosaur you would like for me to draw. Number one is Therizinosaurus. Number two is Albertoceratops. And three is Ceratosaurus. Who do you want to see me bring to life? I'm excited. I'm really giddy right now, guys, just like Ben was. You know, one more minute. Let's wrap up that poll. I'm excited to draw a new dinosaur. I haven't done any of these for Dinovember yet. And really, depending on who we choose, um, they can be hairy. They can be scaly. We 
can make their features very exaggerated. Whatever we want, because these dinosaurs are all fossilized rock. And honestly, you can make them however the heck you want, which is pretty cool. But we'll base it mainly off of known fossils, which are what these three illustrations are actually from. Jocelyn, so awesome to see you. Thank you for joining us. Let's see here. We're doing our poll right now. There's dinosaurs, Albert, Ceratops, or Cerato uh, Ceratosaurus. Which one do you want me to draw? And it looks like we might be wrapping it up here. We'll give another, what, 30 seconds or so. You guys throw those votes in. The polls will close shortly. I love that. That's great. So keep the energy flowing. We're going to draw some dinosaurs. There we go. This has been changed. Um, so it looks like we're coming down for all those who haven't gotten their votes. So let's do it now so I can wrap up and draw a dinosaur. Because everybody likes dinosaurs. All right, Ben. Let's tally this up. Who am I going to draw tonight? Hopefully everybody can hear me. I kind of leaned in a little bit to my iPad. Unfortunately, I don't have the volume like Ben does, but that's okay. We're all in. Okay, all right, so it looks like we have a tie between Therizinosaurus and Alberta Ceratops. Um, should I leave this to a coin flip? I think I'm going to, actually. All right, so heads, it'll be Therizinosaurus. Alberta Ceratops will be tails. I'm going to do the coin flip. It has to be on the table. Heads, boom, baby. Looks like we're going to do this amazing dinosaur. So I want to thank everybody once again for throwing their votes in. Awesome. Nick, you want it with some hair? Uh, I could get some sweet, dapper hair. Um, all right, guys. So to get started, I just want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. This is really cool for us to do. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to draw a dinosaur the way that I do. So grab your pencil and paper, grab an iPad, whatever you've got, and let's get drawing. So, first things first, I always like to look at the fossils that are available. So thanks to Scott Hartman, down here you can see his name. I actually reference Scott Hartman's work quite a bit. This guy has his own website, and what he does is he goes in and he finds all the known fossils that have been dug up throughout the last 100, 200 years, puts them together, gets all the science together, and then he tries to reconstruct that fossil as best as possible. So I use that to reference the animal itself when I'm drawing. Now, believe it or not, a lot of dinosaurs are only known from maybe 1% to 2% of the fossils found. So a lot of it is imagination. That's the best part. They're all buried in the ground. Who knows what they'll look like? So you really can't be wrong when you're doing this. All right, guys. So here we go. We're going to do Therizinosaurus tonight. So we're going to start with a new canvas. Pop out here. So I'm going to go ahead and do an 8x8 eight eight canvas. And for those who are on the iPad, I recommend using the program Procreate. It's 99 cents. Um, the only expensive part is the stylus. And you can, it actually might be on sale to, uh, this week from Best Buy because of Black Friday. So a little pencil, get started, six by six frame. Now, what I like to do is start out with a sketch. This way, I kind of have a base look of how I want this animal to be moving, a shape, because what I used to run into as a kid is I would start an eyeball on the page, and I'd have this really cool dinosaur eye, but then all of a sudden I'd end up drawing the entire head, and it would just fall off the page, and then I would all of a sudden have to add another page. So what I've had to do now is sketch essentially a skeleton or a stick figure as to where I want the animal within the frame. So normally I start off with a circle. That's pretty simple as the head. All right, cool beans. 
And then he's got a nice long neck. Sloping down. No, they did have kind of like a goose neck. I always like referencing that. The more movement in their necks, I really enjoy having. Um, just making them very, very um, dynamic creatures. These, we used to think they were sluggish, but they're not. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and kind of give them a body. So there you go. Nice round, another circle. So here's the front of his chest, his back, maybe a couple circles for his arms. And then maybe right about here is when I'm going to draw his leg. So that's, this guy was bipedal. So I'm going to put his back legs on the back side of him, but they're going to be lower than his front arms. He's got to carry those long sights. So, and then just kind of a long line there, and that's kind of showing you where his tail is going to be going. Now, once again, I like to reference the dinosaur's anatomy. So bones and all, you're going to be looking for, you know, the skull. So we can represent that with a circle and a square. The neck, vertebrae, so with this S shape. And then you're also going to do the forearms. This is what will be kind of the rib cage back leg, second back leg, and then the tail. Now, yes, feel free. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm just showing you an easy way that I have produced some of the art that I do. So like I said, I like to go back and reference the actual fossil itself. So you see he's got this long, goose-like neck, forearms, hips, and tail. So I've got all of that. And then we're also now going to just do little stick arms. So this, once again, is just kind of a, uh, a quick sketch. I don't want to do anything detailed yet of how we want him to look. And this also keeps him on the screen. So once again, this kind of helps me reference where I'm at with the illustration. That way I know I'm not falling off. What's really cool with the iPad is I can go in here and grab a piece and move it forward if I need to. So you can do that with a selection tool at the top. Circle whatever you want. Grab it with the mouse cursor and move it around. I can even enlarge and small it if I wanted to. And set it where I need to. Now those who are drawing at home, yep, you're going to have to erase. I know I've been doing it for years, and that's why I finally broke down and got an iPad. But yeah, just, you can do a quick scribbly race and then redraw it where you need to. All right, so it looks really goofy right now, and that's because there is just a stick figure of a dinosaur standing in front of us. All right, so next step, we can start kind of adding in some of the features on this guy. So once again, it was that gooseneck, and I'm going to add the base there. Draw up, and it's almost this S shape. Let's move him along the back of his head here for his neck. And then down here, those who know Trogdor. Um, so we're gonna, we got his neck there. Okay, and then we're going to kind of beef and just give him these beefy arms. A couple more circles. And this kind of gives a little bit of girth. Now, these guys did have great big calf muscles. They were bipedal. So I kind of draw a calf there around where the knee would be. And then bring it down, maybe a couple circles for where the toes might be. And this is, once again, give me a reference of where everything is going to be on this animal. So we're going to clean it up a little bit here. So I know all the lines that I'm watching. And we'll slide into the other ones. I'm actually going to make him a little bit smaller. And this is giving me a chance to move out his tail a little bit. I don't like it kind of curled up right there. I'm going to bring it down and up and over. All right, so now we have more tail showing there. All right, hopefully everybody's following along nicely. Now, these guys did have what's called a pubis, which is that bone below them. Um, this is just kind of where all the muscle was connected. So here's the pubis, and that's what I'm drawing down here. But the Therizinosaurus was also known for its great big pot belly. So they believed this guy would walk around, eat some foliage, and it would slosh around inside of his belly. And a lot of people thought it was kind of like a giant cauldron. 
So as it fermented, this guy could roam around, protect himself with those great big claws. So he is an herbivore despite those big slashers. All right, so going in here a little bit more, we're beefing this boy out. He did have a shorter tail, so I'm going to erase that. Now we are going to have this available afterwards. If you guys missed some of the steps here, you can rewatch the video on our Facebook and be able to follow me from there. All right, so we've got his tail, we've got his head, we've got his arms. Maybe put some hands on here. We've also got his ankle. And then we're going to bring down his foot and his little tozers. And this guy had some pretty awesome claws. They were a theropod dinosaur, so they were related to, like, the Tyrannosaur and the Allosaurus. So he belongs in that group, but he isn't a carnivore, which is very unusual for this group of dinosaurs. But originally, this animal was found with just the claws, and that's why they thought it was a massive carnivore used these claws to slash at its prey and then um, they found a fossil in I believe it was Asia where it actually had the head and it had these strange pig-like teeth that weren't very suitable for ripping and tearing through flesh they were made for stripping leaves off of trees so it was believed that this guy would use it either for defense claws or he would use them to strip bark off of trees or even look for termites by cutting through termite mouths, kind of like an ant spear. We don't know. That's just something that has been speculated, but we're just going to have some fun with it. We can even, we can even make him look like Wolverine if we wanted to. All right, so you guys can see that I've beefed him out a little bit. Going to move that kind of gooseneck up. And then he had this really, really tiny little head. It's weird how some of the dinosaurs have these great gargantuan bodies and these tiny, tiny little heads. Okay, so we're going to go back to our reference. You guys, reference, 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 reference. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, we, you can make these animals up, but it helps to have these references. So, once again, Scott Hartman, fabulous fossil designer. You can see right here the Therizinosaurus, from what we know, had a very tiny head. It almost looks like an ostrich. All right. So we'll go back to our dinosaur here. I'm going to shorten up his face a little bit because he had that kind of ostrich appearance. Okay. And there we go. So that's usually where I stop. Um, I use blue because this helps me kind of track where I am with the illustration. And you'll see this in a lot of um, drawings that are just begun. Artists will use a blue and then they'll go over with black. So, yeah, I love that. Edward Scissorhands, we might have to put some goth, you know, gothic gear on him or something. Uh, maybe he did a lot of gardening with his paws. All right, so we're going to add a second layer to this. And then we're going to make sure that the first layer is visible, but we're actually going to be working on the second layer. So those who are playing at home with the pencil and pen, you guys can go ahead and use a different color. If you're using a pencil, you can use a marker. And then now you can go ahead and start going over those lines. And this is when I start adding in the detail. Um, tonight we're going to just be using good old black as the exterior colors for the final illustration. So, um, yeah, we just kind of start from the head and work our way back. So in the light of things, I like to give these guys a nice smile, because why not? I believe dinosaurs could have smiled. And see, I'm just using the frame of the dinosaur to start filling it in. So that's why I do that original first sketch with the blue. This is my skeleton. Uh, I guess the frame of the skeleton. And then I'm just following it. And you know what's really nice about having the iPad is I can add a little pressure and it will increase the line size. And if I pull the pencil off, it'll actually decrease it. Kind of give me this really cool cartoon look. Alright, so we're going to go down the neck. And this really cool long neck. All right, so we've got that going down so far. 
working down to these big beefy arms. Now you have to remember the perspective too on these guys. They did have a chest. And so I'm gonna try and build it out where he's kind of in front of you almost flexing. Oh, look at my sweet arms. That's his claws hanging off. Uh, but this also gives him perspective as well. Kind of walking towards you holding his big old hands. We go back to the eyes. Now, since it is, we're kind of doing an illustration, I'm not gonna really do a anatomically correct slash realistic one. We're add a little flavor to this guy. So we're gonna add a kind of a cartoony eye. There we go, he looks pretty happy. I might back out and redo that again. Two fingers for reversing that. There we go. Little eye shine by drawing a circle. Oops. And then we gotta give him his nostril. And these guys did have a beak, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna add that in there too. I'm not gonna add in any details until the end of the illustration. So, cool, we've got his head. Come back down here, it's the arms. So here's where the pecs are. And then we're also gonna collarbone. And we're gonna add a little definition to the neck. So you can actually follow this original line down the neck, but you're just gonna duplicate it right here. So that just kind of gives them a little three dimension to that, what very two dimensional neck is. Kind of like an ostrich. Okay, we're gonna go back down here and start working on those arms again. Maybe a little elbow, some shoulder action. Now this guy is really flexing. He's showing off his sweet gear. This guy did not miss arm day. Maybe missed leg day, but we're not gonna hold it against him because he's extinct. So, ooh, a couple brachiosaurus in the background. Alrighty, and here comes kind of the tricky part with the hands. I've always had problems with hands. That is why I went in and drew the claws first. And then what I'll do is add in little tiny digits on top of that. So these guys only had three fingers, which is a holdover from their theropod lineage. So we're only gonna give him three fingers. But we're gonna add in these really, really cool sides. So Therizinosaurus actually means scythe lizard. And as you guess, it's because of these large sides on his hands. So, and this is also a nice part too about having that sketch in the background is even though his hand might be up front, I can go ahead and follow that sketch behind. It might be a little off, but that's okay. So we can go back and mess around with that in a little bit here. A little big. Go way back and erase there. This, oops, site was a little too large. I don't want to go crazy on this. We want them to somewhat match. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look and reference the existing claws. Make sure they match. That looks much better. Sweet, so he's kind of holding. He might have a hand of cards he doesn't want you to see, so that's probably why I have those really cool claws. All right, now we're going to go back up top, maybe a little shoulder there, and then we're going to do that awesome back. So these guys did have a very large spine to support that back. Um, if you're on the iPad with Procreate, what a really cool thing that I've found is you can draw a line and let it snap, and then it will actually let you go rigid and you won't see the imperfections that you've drawn. So once again, you can just draw a line. So you hold it down and then it will just snap into place and give you that perfect curve. Sweet. If not, you know, take your, your paper, turn it sideways if you wanted to, and then just with the, your stroke of your hand, just go from top to bottom. So top to bottom and you get a nice little arc there. Thank you, technology. All right, next we're going to go down. His knee was a little bit higher, so I'm going to change that a little bit, maybe put a couple wrinkles in there. Down to the ankle bone. And believe it or not, these guys did walk on their tippy toes. Give him a nice little calf, and then back up to the thigh. All right, so we've got a leg there. Now we're going to work on the other one, which is hidden behind him. So once again, that sketch comes in handy 
because I'm able to reference it and not worry about drawing over it. Actually, I will draw over it, but I will not worry about it in the end with the final illustration. We're going to draw that belly. Okay, and then we're going to finish up that back leg. All right. So these guys, like I said, they had really cool clogged feet. Big old tozers. You know, with these guys, I uh, like to reference birds quite a bit because birds are technically the closest relative to dinosaurs. So a lot of times I'll be bouncing back and forth, specifically with, they were here, the ratites, the ostriches, emus, and cassowaries. They are very similar to what we believe dinosaurs' feet actually looked like. So if you want to take a look at that, it's a very good way to reference dinosaurs' feet and kind of how they stood. Once again, this is a very cartoon of looking at it. Uh, we're going to give another toe here, almost like little teardrops, little teardrops. And then we're going to draw the squishy toe bits. All right. Once again, this is all perspective. And I'm always changing things. So I'll even go back at the very end of an illustration and modify it. All right, so we got those little toe beans. At the ends, they've got claws. I'm not digging how long these feet are or these toes are, so what I'm going to go ahead and do with my sweet technology is I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to move it back. There we go. These big old flip-flops anymore. It's kind of, it's much better. All right, and then we're going to finish up with that tail. So once again, I can go ahead if I really wanted to and draw that arc and it will snap it to a perfect arc. Thank you, Procreate, whoops. And then we're gonna do another one. We'll snap it right about there. So once again, if you guys are drawing with a pencil, a crayon, a pen, you guys can go ahead and just turn your paper to the side and start from the bottom and do that natural motion. It's gonna to wanna to do that. So that's what I'll do if I'm illustrating this with pencil and paper. Which I honestly haven't done in a very long time. Probably should do one of those. I'm actually working on a bunch of recreations for our upcoming dinosaur book, and all those illustrations are on paper. And I've had to go back and modify them. All right, guys, so there's our Therizinosaurus. Pretty simple, right? I know we have a lot of fur. Cool. Well, this is the next step where we can add that. This is the main body of the dinosaur. Now I can go in to my layers, and I'm going to hit the little check mark next to the original sketch, and now I've got our Therizinosaur standing here without a sketch. Not bad, huh? All right. So it looks like our video has been interrupted. The broadcast has been paused. It should resume shortly. So all right, I think we're back up and going. Might have some technical difficulties going on here. All right, let's see if this catches up. If it doesn't, that's all right. I'll just continue on. Uh, maybe this will catch up with me. But um, I'll just keep going. So now that I have the base dinosaur, the line art going on, I want to start adding in some details. So as you saw in my line art, I actually added in a big old belly here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in that. So this kind of gives him a little bit of girth. Um, I reference elephants quite a bit when I do this. Elephants and rhinos. Um, they're kind of pot belly shapes. Add a lot of definition to it, which is really, really cool. And that kind of gives you the guy was trotting around. He had a big old belly. And we're going to add in some wrinkles around, you know, the parts that move. I think that's what a lot of people struggle with is where do I put all these wrinkles and all these designs? You're going to do them where the parts of the animal are actually moving. So neck, not as much. We're not going to put a whole lot of wrinkles here. But we're going to put one, you know, a couple maybe near the base of the head. You know, this way it looks like this is where the head will rotate on the end of that neck. Maybe at the base of the neck, give him a couple of wrinkles. I'll add a few here down the neck so it will kind of look like his throat. 
team. I think I'm good to go with all of that. Uh, one thing I like to emphasize too, and I remember this, I was talking to a friend a very long time ago. They, um, they thanked me. I'm like, oh, I appreciate that, but I, why? Well, when you showed me how to draw a very long time ago, you showed me that when drawing in a line, a very natural line on an animal or a person, you can go in and actually break those lines up by just dotting them as you stroke. And what that's going to do is kind of give you a very natural feeling to the illustration. So I can go in here if I really wanted to and draw these solid lines, but it's just it's kind of boring. It almost makes it look too two-dimensional. Too so what I like to do is go in here as I'm drawing. Well, we've got to stay source crashing. Sorry, guys. The past fine. Don't worry. You know, if you're just gentle, they'll move on their way. You don't mess with your kids. All right, I think we're past. No more dinosaurs. I think they're just coming to visit. All right. Anyway, back to the there's dinosaurs. So like I say, you can break up those lines, and it gives it a very natural appearance to the body. Um, you know, if you look at our skin, if you look at the skin of a dinosaur, or I'm sorry, an elephant, a dinosaur, like a bird, um, they don't have hard lines running to them. Everything is kind of broken up. And that just gives you a little bit more definition. So that's what my friend thanked me for. They're like, thank you for showing me that I should break up lines. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start working on claws. So these guys, I'm going to presume, since they were related to the theropods and belonged into the family of birds. So these guys are non-avian dinosaurs, but they're related to birds. I'm going to give them scales, and that's my preference. Um, I just like the old school look with the scales, and that's because I'm just following along the fingers. And you'll find these large scales along the toes, along the claws, and even at the base of the ankle, because these guys were walking through what I would presume some heavy brush. There might have been some sticky stuff in there. So they wanted to guard their feet. You know what? Nobody likes tromping through the underbrush and getting stabbed by all the sticky stuff. What better to do it with a bunch of scales? So I added the scales in there. They're on his feet. It's looking good so far. I'm actually kind of pleased. You know, I'm a little, you know, I could have made his hands out a little bit. It looks like he's kind of like, you know, what's up, y'all? And, you know, I'm kind of cool. I'm hanging out. Don't worry about my claws. We're not going to use them. We're just going to be hacking down some leaves so everybody can eat them. Uh, we're going to add in some lines, kind of make it look like there's some roots, almost like the um, quick to a cat's nail. You can add those in to add a little bit more of that wavy look. I'm going to turn off the sketch in the background. Pretty cool, right? Not bad. Um, so it is believed because these guys were so closely related to the birds um, that they might have had some feathers. So with this there's Isosaurus, I'm going to add some. But I'm not going to add them like you would see on a finch or maybe um, like a peacock. We're going to make it look like a downy coat. So this guy was just covered in them, maybe used for insulation and protection. Um, so I'm going to use the existing lines on this dinosaur, and I'm going to break them up. So you can go ahead and erase you know, some of these areas. And I like to do it on the tops of these peaks. So anywhere that the arch is highest is where I like to erase and then just dash some of those lines. So if you dash them in there, now it's starting to look like he's got some feathers on his back. Okay, once again... Find a really high arch because when something moves, if you guys ever see your cat or anything, and when it stretches or it arches its back because it's scared, usually you see the fur raise up on its back, and it's not on its body. You see it on the edges of its neck, on its back. So that's where I'm going to emphasize the feathers on this guy. So you can see I got some on his neck. I got some on his back now. Uh, maybe he had some on his hips. So I'm going to erase some on there. I'm going to add a little bit more there. Okay, so we're starting to get fuzzy, which, you know, Nick, you added some hair, wanted some hair. I mean, I guess keratin comes in different forms, and that's what feathers were. That's what hair is on us. So I'm just going to add some more hair, feathers, feathers. I don't know. Say whatever you want. I'm not going to judge you. And then on his body, he's probably covered in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of add those dashed lines like I did along the back to the body. 
So now this is kind of giving it the appearance that the feathers were not only on the top, but maybe possibly on the bottom as well. All right, so it's getting those feathery look. I like it a lot. Um, I'm gonna go in here and kind of clean up some of these things. The arm is a little too frail for me, especially if it's holding these massive claws. So I'm gonna change that here. There we go, he's got those big baby arms to wield these giant sides. All right. There's his wrist, maybe his elbow. Okay, maybe we'll give him a little definition for that bicep, which is pretty cool. All right. All right, so it's a pretty solid form. I'm gonna add some feathers there along the hip maybe. Um, maybe the bottom of his neck wasn't covered in feathers. So I'm gonna leave that just like how it is. So this is gonna look like skin, but maybe it trickled down to the base of the neck. Um, just like, kind of like a vulture. I wanna think about it that way. Vultures had a very, have very naked necks. And I, I like that thing. So we're going to add some more feathers here. Maybe working their way down to his arm. Sorry, the lady Therizinosaurus won't judge about his hairy arms. Maybe this is a lady Therizinosaurus. And, you know, maybe the dudes are into that. That's okay. We won't, we, like I said, we're not going to judge. It's 2020. All right. There we go. Some more fur along those shoulders. Now he's looking like a fuzzy dinosaur. All right, so once again, we kind of have that cool reptilian look with the naked neck. And we got some fur on it. I think it's turned out pretty well. All right, so add some more wrinkles to that knee. We know that they were moving on that, so I like to add in those wrinkles. I, I Like I said, I really based off of elephants, and rhinos. Look at that. Study the natural things, and it'll make your drawings Ah, make them very realistic because <clears throat> we've seen them. We've seen everybody knows what an elephant looks like. Hopefully, everybody knows what a rhino looks like. So those are very normal things for us to see. And if you see them on an illustration, you're going to kind of be able to relate a little bit more. All right. So his body is looking great. We're going to come up to the head now, and I'm going to work on some more details. Once again, not a big fan of the eyes, so I'm just going to erase that. You can go back into your original sketch. You see, I didn't really put an eye in there. Well, now I know where I want to put it. We're actually going to have to dull this down a little bit. And turn down the opacity. There we go. And you can draw the circle for the eye. So now I know where his eye is going to be. And now I'm going to pop in. Whoops, that was on the wrong layer. I'm all by it. <clears throat> go back to this one. Drop down the opacity. This happens all the time. Then I have to go back. Do the eyeball. Let me change the blue up a little bit, a bit darker. All right, now I know where the eye is going to be. All right, pop back to that layer with the black. Keep that other layer on, and we're just going to draw that eye. So once again, I'm following that circle. Not really fine. So I'm trying to do working on my Disney esque kind of illustrations where they have these big batty eyes. Very, um, you know, puppy dog. It's it's different for me because I'm such a science-based individual that I want to go ahead and draw eyes as they would actually appear within the animal's skull. So this is how I would normally draw it, drawing those eyelids. You know, they probably have a nictating membrane, but that doesn't really work with this illustration. So once again, I'm going to go in and try and do this really cool Disney thing, which more human, I guess, is the appearance that I'm going to be going for. Okay, so. And then maybe a little lower eyelid. These guys are probably covered in all kinds of wrinkles. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some scales to the animal's head, because why not? Give it that reptilian appearance. Maybe the beak was covered in keratin, kind of like an owl or a toucan or an ostrich. So I'm going to give it a couple little stripes here, and that's going to give the appearance almost like a woody look to it. And that's going to you know, tell you that this is a beak. 
All right, make sure to emphasize that smile. We got a big old lip person up there. All right, and then I'm gonna, ooh, I think it's a baryonic, sorry guys. These animals come around. We're going to get be really, really quiet. No, I think it left. All right, pupils in there. We have a little bit of eye shine, so that is actually what really brings an eye to light, is putting in that eye shine. So when I'm doing this, um, I like to kind of give it a general appearance with the eye, but when I hand it off to Ben, he's the one who actually puts all that stuff in for me. So I'm not going to worry too much about the eye, but I'm going to give him the general appearance. So once again, I'm going to go back to my reference. All righty, so I've got the claws. I've got the feet. I'm actually missing this toe claw. We've got the ostrich-like head. We've got the big pot belly and the tail. So I'm actually going to pop back over, and we're going to add that big old claw to his toe because that's something that I saw on the fossil. And I'm going to add that in here. So I'm going to erase this. I love drawing dinosaurs because I can make them however I want. But a really funny story that I, you know, I find humbling is I remember sitting down probably, it might have been a decade ago. It might have been a decade ago. Ben and I were sitting at his apartment and we were going through a dinosaur book. And I just remember looking at him and being like, dude, I want to draw dinosaurs like this one day. And he's like, well, why don't you? Well, I, I just don't know how to. And he's like, then you should practice. You should practice, practice, practice. And I'm like, okay. So I remember very distinctly starting to practice. And over the years, I've gotten better and better and better. Oh, hopefully, I've gotten better and better and better with my illustrations. So I encourage everybody to go ahead and practice. Um, you know, that's the biggest thing is making sure that you don't get stuck up on somebody else's illustration. You don't get stuck up on an imperfection within your art. Biggest thing is it's yours. Um, and make it yours. Make it yours. This is your dinosaur. And if you just continue to practice reference, get, you know, through those little hurdles, you'll start seeing some things and you'll improve upon them. And then one day, like I've been doing it, it kind of comes, it comes very naturally. You start seeing those things and then you'll correct it. You'll be like, okay, that neck doesn't look right. The feet don't look right. And then I also, all over my desk, I have Tyrannosaur skull, I have a Tyrannosaur figurine. And what I do is I use those as references. So if I need to find a foot and see how it needs to be drawn, I'll use that. So I have practice, practice, practice. I've got toys all over my desk. They help me visualize things. And that is what it takes for me to create these things. So one question that Shelby did ask, the style of drawing seems to be really, really fast. How long does it take you to do more detailed work outside your dino than our cartoony dinos? Very good question, Shelby. Um, believe it or not, this style for me has taken actually longer to develop because I'm not used to it. So on top of doing all my detail work, I've also had to train myself for the cartoony stuff. But for my car my regular dinosaurs that I draw, they can take anywhere from an hour to six to eight hours to draw. And that's not consecutively. So what I'll do is I'll bounce back and forth. I'll make sure my proportions are correct. And then I'll also you know, maybe get a little tired and I'll come back to it. I even have some dinosaur illustrations that span across eight, you know, not eight, four different pieces of paper. And I've had to integrate those into one image. So then I have to scan them. So yeah, it does. It uh, definitely takes me a while to draw those finished pieces. So uh, I will go ahead and show you an example. So before we go on from there, here we are, guys. Here's the Therizinosaurus. Pretty awesome. Hopefully you have moved along nicely with your illustrations. If you would love to, go ahead and take a picture, post them in our comments, take a picture, post them in the Facebook comments of Bros Brothers Productions, hashtag us on Instagram at Bros, B-R-O-S-E, Bros, B-R-O-S, Pro, 
and hashtag us with your image and show us what you did tonight. That would be so cool because that's an inspiration for me. And hopefully I inspired you and in showing you how I draw our dinosaurs. So back to the gallery, you can actually see here's all of our dinosaurs for Dinovember. And I'm going to scroll down to some of the more elaborate dinosaurs that I do. So here's one. This is actually a Velociraptor recreation that I did uh, quite a ways, a while back, 5, 2020. Okay, so this is, feels like forever ago. Um, but I can actually do a replay for you guys really quick. And what this is going to do is show you time lapse of what it, what it took for me to draw this. So you can see that I actually took the skull of a Velociraptor and I drew on top of it. And from there, I know it's, I, I kind of feel like I'm cheating, but this helped me reference the size and the features of the animal. So as you can see, what I'm doing is I had my original sketch like I did with the blue, and now I'm going in and filling it in with the black line. Now, the color is brand new to me. That's something that I normally hand off to Ben, but this was me practicing with my iPad. And I was at a lake when I was doing this, so I was really laid back. I was enjoying the scenery. We were watching Osprey dive down and eat some fish. So I was actually watching real dinosaurs while I was drawing this dinosaur, um, which was an inspiration itself. So you can see that, you know, it's hard, a little difficult to see, but, you know, I'm going in working on the eye. So this is what takes the majority of the time when I'm drawing these guys, is all the details. We're already at one hour with this piece. And I'm referencing raptor's eyes, so living raptors, like hawks and cassowaries. And you can see I've got all these little tiny details going on in there. We're going to fast forward. I don't know if you guys want to sit there and watch that. Um, and then I started going in and doing some of the highlights on the feathers. So now we're an hour and 46 minutes into this illustration, adding in some shadows. So my illustration style is very unique because what I'll do is I'll bounce back and forth from highlight to shadow to original line art to the eye to the tongue. And that's just kind of how I've always worked. Some illustrators will do exactly what we did earlier. They will go ahead and do a base drawing with the blue line and then they'll go on top of it with the black lines. Then they'll do a base color, then they'll add shadows and then they'll add highlights. I guess I just like bouncing around and making sure that the whole piece flows as I see it. So here we are two hours and 30 minutes into this one. I'm adding in those really cool little scales to the reptile part of this raptor. Now this is Velociraptor, believe it or not. So unlike the ones in Jurassic Park, these guys weren't very big. They were only about the size of a turkey. Six feet long, terrifying turkey with a grappling claw. Um, I'm kind of messing around with the background here, you know, seeing if I could add something else, maybe make him pop a little more. And you see how, you know, all these little tiny brush strokes, this is what it takes for me to create these things. So this piece here took me three hours and 43 minutes to create on my iPad. Crazy, huh? And it turned out really well. I'm actually excited with it. Um, what I'm trying to do is minimize the amount of dark lines, kind of give it more of a feeling of the living dinosaur and not a cartoon itself. All right, guys. So yeah, some of the more detailed pieces that I do can take up to four hours. And that was just the head of the dinosaur. And if I really wanted to, I could expand this uh, canvas on my iPad and do the rest of the dinosaur. But that one is just beautiful as is. Um, and you can see from there, I've also done some really cool pieces and the same process took even with the Styracosaurus that's in the silhouette. I had to draw that out first and then I made it black and then I was able to get the silhouette. So you can even take your illustrations, flatten them black and put them into a beautiful scene like this if you're into a starscape. All right, guys. So at that, I'm going to pop back up to our wonderful, wonderful Therizinosaurus. Boom, there he is, like how dapper he is. And I just want to open up to any questions that you guys might have regarding your illustration, if you need help with anything, if you're curious more about how I draw my dinosaurs, throw those questions out there. 
If you are excited about dinosaurs, I want to hear about it. I want you to make your roars. Ben and I even have our own song that we sing along whenever we're doing dinosaurs. Um, oh, and then also one thing that Ben just brought up to me, which all artists should always do with any illustration. You guys, we got to sign this. Um, you got to put your name down there. You got to own this. So I've got a pretty cool little brush here. We'll even put the date. You sign that because you own that. That is your dinosaur. Everybody should know that you created this. So remember to put your signature on your piece. You know, make sure it doesn't get in the way of your illustration because everybody's looking at the piece, but they want to know who it was. So, oh, Shelby, thank you. Sweet. I want to hear more roars. I don't see one Shelby Saurus. Uh, like, you know, we say we'll have this available on our Facebook page. You guys will be able to watch this over and over again if you'd like to. Um, remember, follow us on Instagram. We're on Bros Brothers Productions. You guys can hashtag us, Bros Bros Pro. It's our, you know, name, B-R-O-S-E, B-R-O-S, Pro. Share those dinosaurs that you created. Like and share our dinosaurs for each day on Dinovember. It'll put your name into a drawing for the 3D printed Tyrannosaurus Rex skull that I had the absolute honor of creating. It wasn't my design, but I was able to print it out so we could go ahead and give you guys a prize and thank you for sharing all of our stuff, for liking our stuff. So go on our Instagram and share and like our dinos. We still have 11 more to go. Don't forget to enter. It's a blast. If you guys have any questions on, you know, how we still continue to do this, like I said, feel free to ask. So what I'm going to do is for maybe the last seven minutes or so, or however long Ben gives me, if you've got questions, throw them out there. If not, I can sit here and continue to talk about dinosaurs because they're amazing. Thank you, Shelby, for throwing up that hashtag especially because the bros bros can be difficult. I used to throw on the pro there, so thank you for making sure we have the bros bros. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank you guys, seriously. Uh, you are fabulous. And right now is a great time for us all to dive into our imagination and draw these things to practice. Because, you know, this is kind of a time where we're more, you know, having to calm and get down you know, sit in the front room, and why not draw a dinosaur? Obviously, that's what I'll be doing. Uh, will this be tomorrow's Dino for Dino November? I don't know. You guys are going to have to find out because I can't tell you. But it might be one of the Dino November dinosaurs, so you'll just have to follow us on Instagram and see if our Therizinosaurus pops up. Uh, but we do have a lot of cool animals that are going to be appearing and I cannot wait to share them with you because dinosaurs rock. They are some of the most amazing animals to have ever walked the planet. I only can continue to improve on my skills with them. And you guys are amazing for stopping by. Keep up your good work. We love seeing all of you guys. Nick. Uh, you know, I could definitely do a turkey. We might have a creature that represents a turkey. Who knows? I mean, if you kind of catch my hint and have seen the first Jurassic Park, you might get a clue as to who's showing up on Thanksgiving. Um, you guys just have to follow us. Check it out. So uh, any feedback you guys have, questions, comments, please throw them in your our way. I love to hear them. It helps us improve this so you guys will have a really good interaction with us. We give you exactly what you need and we really hope that we can keep doing this for you. Uh, in the future we are looking to set up a Patreon so if you guys are familiar with that we are talking about it. Uh, we're hoping to get it rolling here very very shortly. If you guys are Patreon supporters we would love to have you a part of that and that will give you access to a lot of different things that we might be um, creating in the future. Maybe a dinosaur book. Hmm? You may be one that I've already kind of illustrated. And Ben will be, um, 
you know, coloring and it might be really, really cool. So Nick has asked for a person for scale. I'm just going to do a, a quick silhouette because to be honest, I'm really not that good at people. So here's our little dude standing here, this ominous figurine, kind of give him a hat here. He's going to be like, holy hot diggity. That was a great big dinosaur. Wow. That's huge. I can't believe how big that dinosaur is. So thank you guys, everybody, for coming out tonight. Um, we love all of you. We miss all of you. We hope you're doing well out there. Um, take care. This dinosaur is to scale, so this thing is really, really big to a person. Um, actually, it looks like I made it the human way too big. We got to scale him down. Believe it or not, that is probably as big as this dinosaur is compared to a human being. Isn't that crazy? So this was a very, very large dinosaur, and it probably did a good job of scrapping with Tyrannosaurus rex. I'm not going to lie. I think this was an Asian species of dinosaur, so it might have interacted with some of the Tyrannosaurs that evolved on that side of the world. Um, and what better way to defend yourself than with the claws on your hands, your giant prowess. You know, no one's going to mess around with these guys. So, once again, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Thank you for sticking around. Share this. We want to keep the energy going. We love dinosaurs. D -I -dinosaurs. Dino, dino, dinosaurs. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for joining us. And have a wonderful evening. Take care. Stay safe. And dinosaurs rock on. Have a good night, guys. Take care. Right? Theme song continue. D I and a source. D no dino dinosaurs. D I and a source. D no dino dinosaurs. Oh, we love our bones in the ground. Yeah, dinosaurs, you're welcome there. They're freaking awesome dinosaurs. We're going to dig them out of the ground so we can make some more dinosaurs. Is it a claw? What's a claw? This is the claw. The claw of the dinosaur. The therizinosaur. The great big therizinosaur. This big old claw. D-I-I-N-O-S-O-R. Dino, dino, dinosaur. Actually, he was throwing up an I love you symbol. I'm sorry. That wasn't meant to be a, a little middle finger there. You know, here, I'll kind of emphasize it some more there for you, Olivia. I love you. I love dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. Dinosaurs. We love our dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. Dinosaurs. Yeah.